Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So this is going to be a, like an introduction to materials. Materials are a pretty extensive topic, and we'll have more videos going over more specific uh, discussion about materials in the future. But as an introduction, though, I wanted to kind of go over what a material is, how you make one, how you assign one, and how you edit one. So what a material is, if you think about the real world, things are made of different materials such as carpet or fabrics or paper or metal or glass or anything plastic so I'll think of all those things as materials and so in Maya when you create a material you're creating the surface property of an object and, and trying to determine how it looks and feels so that it matches a material in the real world such as plastic if you want something to look plastic you have to have you know, make it look a certain way when it comes to how it, how shiny it is and and uh, how bumpy it is and so on. If you're wanting something to look like paper, you know, it's not going to be shiny at all. So first, I'm just going to create a sphere. Doesn't matter what it is actually. I'm going to hide the grid. If you look at the sphere, it just looks like a gray kind of matte ball. There's no shininess by default. It, Maya assigns everything you create a default texture and in this case it's this gray uh, color so if I select my sphere hit control A for the attributes and the slide over here you see I have Lambert 1 Lambert 1 is the material the default material in Maya when you open a new scene in Maya you'll automatically have Lambert 1 in your scene file that gets assigned to anything. If you ever overwrite the attributes of Lambert 1, if I change anything in here, any new object I make in the future will have those changes applied also. Lambert 1 is automatically applied to any new thing that you make. And so what I think for this video, I'm going to go over the common material attributes of the Lambert. So Lambert is probably the simplest material you can use, has no shininess inherently, it won't be reflective. You can't, you know, make anything that looks really shiny, glossy, reflective, anything like that with a Lambert. It's just a matte color with some other effects. So before we get into like what all these sliders and such do, first let's talk about creating a material and assigning it. And then we'll go into how to manipulate them. So I'm going to control A to close my attribute editor. And I'm going to go to window rendering editors hypershade the hypershade is Maya's uh, def uh, default material editor uh, window and it's got a lot of stuff in here I don't want you to look at this and feel too overwhelmed if you're new to it but the main thing and we're gonna have a like a hypershade centric video eventually but for now just looking at an introduction to materials you see this is my default kind of layout here over here on the left you have the create tab and all this stuff is in the create tab and I might have more materials than you do based on you know certain plugins and such that you can download on the internet will give you different uh, material types and such that you can use I'll just hide this so down here I have in this list there's Maya and you see I have surface volumetric displacement blah 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 I'm not gonna worry about all that too much right now so just kind of ignore that. I'll just even slide that over. These tabs in the middle here show lots of different material types. I mean, I have tons of them, probably more than most people. But toward the, the top middle here, what we're looking at is Lambert right there. So before I click it, let's move on over here and just kind of look at this area. This top box gives you like a list of everything that is in your scene, and they have these little tabs up here to kind of sort between them. So the first tab is materials and so you'll see right away I have Lambert 1, then I have particle cloud 1 and shader glow 1. These are my default materials that Maya makes in every new scene. So I didn't make these I just hit new scene and these are automatically made. And So any objects I make will get Lambert 1 assigned, any particles I make will get particle cloud assigned and so on. And if I had any textures in my scene, I hit this texture tab, it'll list them all here. Any lights, which 
I don't list them all here any cameras I have my default front side top and perspective cameras so they're listed here so anyway you can see how you can just list most things in your scene based on these tab categories and then the bottom box is a work area where you can actually do things to objects and assign textures and so on anyway before we get too far ahead let's hit this Lambert button I click it once you'll see Lambert 2 gets assigned or gets added to the list up here at the top and then also gets added to my work area which lets me do something to it and we're just going to kind of keep it the default for now just as introduction Lambert 2 here but how do I assign Lambert 2 to my sphere because right now if I go back to my sphere control A Lambert 1 is assigned to my sphere there's several ways you can assign materials to an object if I open up my hypershade again and I'll kind of shrink it a little bit if I middle click and drag from Lambert 2 in the work area or from the list either way just drag it over here and then let go it gets assigned to the sphere to make that a little bit easier to see let me double click Lambert 2 which opens it up in the attribute editor and I'll just change the color here I click on this box and make it red so with my red Lambert 2 if I middle click and drag onto the sphere it gets assigned let me undo that another way will be if I select my sphere right click on it hold down to get the marking menu and down here toward the bottom you see I have assign existing material and actually let me uh, I think it was going off the screen assign existing material and I have Lambert 1 and Lambert 2 so this gives me a list of all materials in my scene if I assign existing material I can choose Lambert 2 and let go and Lambert 2 gets assigned this is also a good way to create new materials if I knew I wanted say I want let's say I want my sphere to be green if I right click on my sphere I can say assign a new material right here if I select that option this assign new material box opens up and from here I can choose just like in the uh, hypershade I have this list I have the same list right here I can just choose Lambert and now I have Lambert 3 in my hypershade and it has automatically been assigned to my sphere so if I double click Lambert 3 and change its color to green you'll see my sphere is not green because Lambert 3 has been assigned to it and if I want to oh, I change my mind middle click and drag Lambert 2 over uh, let's go back to the default right click on my sphere assign existing Lambert 1 so that's how you can quickly assign materials to objects and create them. And this is a Lambert, like I said, so we have very uh, basic controls and no glossiness, shininess, reflectiveness, or anything like that. So it's kind of basic. And that's what we're going to start out with is basics. So with, I'm going to right, I'm going to assign Lambert 2, so it's red. We'll zoom in here and look in the attributes at all my options for Lambert now if you choose a different you can choose a different material after you've chosen a Lambert see I have my type is Lambert I can click this uh, drop down menu and see all the different kinds of materials I have and change it on the fly so even if I chose Lambert and made it red well, let's say I want a red I don't know blend for example I can choose blend from the list and suddenly it's shiny and red so the red color remains but then all the uh, attributes for specular, shininess, glossiness get added to the material because I've changed the type of material. But we'll get into blend later. You know, let's not go too ahead of ourselves. Lambert gives us our basic kind of basic materials we can look at. So then first of all, we have our common material attributes in the attribute list. If I close that uh, menu or close that folder, however one would say that, you have lots of other things in here that we're not going to look at this video we're going to look over the common material attributes and common material attributes are attributes that are assigned to every material these are common material attributes so no matter what material you type you use whether it be Lambert or blend or anisotropic or whatever they'll all have these common material attributes so color is the first one and if you click this box you have your color wheel you can choose whatever color you want like so. You also have a slider which will adjust the brightness 
of that color that you've chosen. So I have this green color. If I slide it down, it'll go all the way down to black. Now, to keep in mind, I've let go of the slider now, and it's black. If I go up now, you'll see it goes to white. So keep that in mind. If you want to maintain that green color, don't go all the way down to black and let go, because now the color is black. And if you adjust the brightness of black, it goes from black to white. So if I choose my color wheel again, you'll see here I have my color history. So it shows you the colors that you've chosen in the past. Like if I choose this yellow color, like so, and then click the box again, that yellow color has now been stored on these white boxes. And you'll, you can save up to, it looks like about 10 of them. So if you ever uh, lose your color on accident, if, as long as you've assigned that color recently, it'll be in this color history right here. That's color, and these little checkerboard boxes, every attribute essentially has one, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's just go through these. Transparency. Transparency, that's pretty self-explanatory. There's a slider here. You can slide it and determine how transparent your sphere is. And just to help demonstrate that, I'll create another object. This cube, for example. And you can see that I can see the cube through the sphere with my transparency increased. If I decrease transparency back down to the bottom, you see my sphere is no longer visible through the sphere. I mean, I'm sorry, the cube is no longer visible through the sphere. Let me change the background. Okay, so now you can see the cube more easily. Or I can even assign another material to this, like uh, Lambert 3. So now I have Lambert 3 assigned to the cube, which is green, and my Lambert uh, 4 <laughs> is this yellow color. And so when I increase the transparency of the yellow sphere, you can see the green sphere through it like that. Now this also uses a color value, and a lot of these do. Uh, for transparency, the way it works is that it goes from black to white. Ambient color. If you increase this, you won't see a lot of effect here in the scene unless I choose high quality. So high quality kind of gives the rendering of the scene more power. It uses more of your computer processing power, but it gives you a more accurate result. So ambient color, if I slide this back down, you'll see that it's kind of this matte finish again. Ambient color, if I increase this, it will increase that color brightness throughout the whole material. So you can kind of tweak your material's uh, intensity with this ambient color slider. Incandescence. This is like giving your object a glow effect as if it is like a light bulb for instance an object that is glowing without having it won't give you any kind of light bleed effect I don't know if that makes sense but uh, if incandescence value if I increase this you'll see how it kind of eventually blows out to white because as if it's adding a light source but don't get too confused by that it's not actually adding any kind of light to the object. It's just adjusting the uh, material of the object. That's using the incandescent slider. Now bump mapping. This has no color value. It's a text box here because you can assign using this checkerboard box a pattern to the sphere that makes it bumpy using a bump mapping texture. We'll skip that one just for now and we'll come back to that later. Diffuse is more of a numeric, these are more numerical values, diffuse, translucence, and so on. And you can adjust these values and kind of see the results you get. If we go down all the way to zero, your diffuse, which is essentially the color, has zero value, so therefore it becomes black. If we go all the way up, it'll take the full value of your color and display it. And then you can, if you don't want it to be full brightness with your color attribute, you can go down here in the diffuse slider without adjusting the color itself and make it darker. Next is translucence and we also have translucence depth and translucence focus. Translucence uh, is a material attribute that uh, controls how light passes through the object. In the real world, you know, light, objects absorb light 
and then reflect it. And they don't always reflect it from the surface of the object. Sometimes the light gets absorbed into the object and gets reflected after it passes through a certain amount. For example, um, something like human, like human skin, for example. It's called a subsurface scattering. For when the light passes into the skin, it kind of gets absorbed by the skin, bounces around, and then gets reflected out and creates a different look than something that just reflects it off the surface. So anyway, with translucence, you can affect how much light passes through the object. Then you have translucence depth and focus, which you can really fine tune that look. If translucence is always down to zero, translucence depth and focus have no effect and there is no light passes through the object. It goes all the, way up to, all the way up to one, all light passes through the object. Okay, And that's more of a taste and also just what, you're, what kind of look you're looking for. I would suggest uh, just adjusting these values and kind of seeing what effect you're getting and fine tune them based on what effect you want. And maybe in the future, maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll have a video just going over uh, translucence and pr maybe pr more, more than likely we'll have a video going over just rendering in general uh, just in the future but anyway so back to bump mapping that's one that we skipped over there's no value here it's just a text box and because you, you but for bump mapping you have to have another file another image to use for your bump mapping source and so what we're going to do is hit this little checkerboard button and you'll see all of these have checkerboard buttons so the, all of these buttons work the same way if I hit this, my Create Render Node window opens, and we can choose what kind of bump we want for this sphere. And Maya comes with several procedural uh, options, such as checkerboard patterns and fractal patterns and noise patterns and so on. There's also a file. If you want to choose a file from your computer hard drive that you have created for, in Photoshop or some other application, or just a photo that you took with your phone, <laughs> you can choose the file option. Uh, we'll just use a checkerboard for now. So then you get a bump value, of, and you can change this, but by default it's 0.5, and bump depth is 1, and use as bump, which is what we want. So let me uh, render this. There we go. So not a, not a really clean, perfect render, but just gives you the effect of what the checkerboard bump map did. It just made this bumping pattern on the sphere, so it looks like it's got this checkmark pattern on it. Um, so that's using bump mapping, and that's really useful for like if you want something to look rough, like carpet. You don't have to model every, you know, all those carpet fibers. Just have a plane that's textured to look like carpet, and then make it bumpy using a bump map and when you render it it'll look more like carpet. So those are our common material attributes. That's kind of a general beginning look at materials. Hopefully that was helpful and you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned a little bit. I uh, hope so. Uh, thanks again for watching and subscribing. Really appreciate it. If you have any requests or comments, you know what, we're going to go over more material stuff soon. This is just kind of an introduction. And uh, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.